Who's in the house? We're in the house. Who's in the house? House in the house. Yes. Pepper time. Okay. What is the derivative of ln absolute value of x? You can ignore the absolute value. Logen. Wait, don't call me. Uh, one over x. Yeah, you have to sit down. One over x. Boom. What's the integral of one over x dx? Chris. Love that. Plus C, because there could have been a constant, because the derivative of a constant is nothing. So, but that's fine. You are successful in my mind. Okay, think in your head. What's the derivative of ln of 2x? ln of 2x. Isa. Is it ln? Nope. No, what's the derivative of ln of u? 1 over u du, right? 1 over u du, let's all say that. 1 over u du. 1 over u du. U, so the derivative is 1 over u du. What's the derivative of 2? 1 over x. 2x over, yeah. So 1 over x is the final answer. Second way to do this, which is wicked cool. So the answer is 1 over x, okay? Wicked cool. The other way to do this is to rewrite this as ln of 2 plus ln of absolute value of x. So log and L, ln is a type of a log. So when I say log, that includes ln, right? It's just a natural log. Log of a product is the sum of two logs. So I'm taking the derivative of this. This is just a constant. This is a number. The derivative number is 0. The derivative of ln of x is 1 over x. So 1 over x. That's why it doesn't matter what this number is. It's just going to be 1 over x. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so with that being said, what's the derivative of ln of 3x? Yeah. Marian. Um, 1 over x. Yes. Okay. I almost said 1 over 3x. Yeah, if you could have said, you could have been oh, thinking all that. over 3x. Yep. I love that too. Equivalent forms are great. What is the derivative of ln of x squared? Just think in your head, 1 over u, du. Think through it. 1 over u, du. 1 over x squared times 2x. a chain rule. Do you remember how to rewrite exponents using log properties? No. Power rule. Power rule. It is called the power rule because it's a power. You can move it to a coefficient. Okay. Sure. So you can rewrite this as if it's a coefficient, it changes to 2 ln of x. So the derivative is 2 times whatever the derivative of ln of x is, which is 1 over x, ah, just 2 over x. Over x. Awesome. So you could do, yeah, 2 over x, or you could do 1 over x squared times 2x, which is 2 over x. Yeah, love it. Okay, what's the derivative of ln of x cubed? Isa. Love that. What's the derivative of ln of x to the 4? 4 over x. Okay. Okay, what's the integral of 1 over x? We've already done this, but I'm... Yes! ln of x plus c. Remember, for integrals, we always put plus c. In yeah. What? I get it. I don't. The derivative yeah, the so like, zero. let's go backwards. Okay. So to no, go... I just don't understand how, like, there's no way to, like, solve for it, right? You just kind of have to think about it. Yeah. There, there, when we do... I'm going to ever figure out a way to solve for yes. it. We will. So with the information provided in this problem, we cannot figure out plus c. Yeah. But if you're given an, in, it's called an initial value. If you're given a point, yeah. if you say x is this and y is this, um, then you can solve for the c. And we will do that. Okay. So if you solve, or, um, see how this y equals? So if you know an x and a y, yeah. you can solve for c. Yeah? yeah. So if you're given a point. Um. That, oh, this is 
Rowback time. This looks similar, right? Doesn't this look similar instead of 1 over x to 1 over x squared? Yes. But I do it a different way. How would I rewrite this? Oh, I gave it away a little bit. You need to rewrite this. This problem has nothing to do with ln at all. This is like a rewrite situation. How would I rewrite 1 over x squared in order to integrate? 1 x to the negative. Yes, 1 x to the negative 2. Can we that? So we haven't learned how to integrate that, and so I just have a strategy. Um, 1 over x to the negative 2. And we haven't learned it yet, but it's not going to be ln. Okay? So it's only if there's an x on the bottom, not an x squared, not an x cubed, like okay. 1 over x. It could be 3x, it could be x plus 7, but it's not x squared, right? It's not x cubed on bottom, it's x. Basically, it's a linear term on bottom. Does it matter from the top? Uh, yes, it does. But right now, it would be 1. Um, uh, yeah, there's like different... Mm, well, and even what I just said is not strictly accurate. Okay, the real term is the difference if the degree of numerator, numerator is one less than degree of denominator. It's going to be ln. This is really premature that I'm saying this, but so this is degree zero, this is degree two, the difference is two, so that's not ln. If you have one over x, so why is one degree zero? Interesting. So because it's x to the zero, like there's no x's. Oh. X to zero is one. Yeah. This is x to the one. Yeah. So the difference of the it's bottom heavy by one. It's a different way to say it. Bottom heavy by one. Then this is bottom use, heavy by two degrees. That when you use ln. Yep. If you have x squared plus x over x cubed plus like x squared, you know whatever. What's the degree on top? Two. Two. What's the degree on bottom? Three. Three. So it's bottom heavy by one degree. So the highest degree. Yeah. Down. Yeah. Degree. The definition of degree of a term is the highest exponent. Okay. Yeah. So when I say degree, that refers to the highest exponent, not the sum of the exponents. That you just just have. So this is going to be an ln situation. If this was a, to the fourth, it wouldn't be. If it was flipped around and this was like a 3 and this was a 2, that's a no. It has to be bottom heavy by 1 degree. All right, cool. Let's We're going to redo this problem. Um, so if it's bottom heavy by 1 degree, we know the integral is going to be ln. Okay, bottom heavy by 1 degree is going to be ln. So I make u the denominator, okay? Because we're going to do other u substitutions, we're going to use other things. But for right now, if it's they're all going to be bottom heavy by one degree, and use the denominator. Like u equals x cubed plus x. You automatically, once you write u, you just don't look at this. You just take du. 3x squared plus 1, and write a little dx on the end. Okay? And then we do what's called like playing the matching game to rewrite it. So this is, you know how like we rewrite, derive, simplify? This is going to be r i s. Rewrite, integrate, simplify. And the rewriting is u substitution. So this is the rewrite step with u. So I rewrote the integral. I rewrote the, the division. What am I going to rewrite x cubed plus x as? Try not to cheat off by looking at the paper. Look up here. What is x cubed plus x? It becomes d, right? Nope. What is what? X cubed plus X. What did I call it? U. U. Is right here? Yeah. Yeah. So I did the bottom. Oh, we'll just. Oh. Yeah. Oh, we can just make it U. Yeah. So I'm substituting these things over here. And then 3X squared plus 1 and the DX, all of that is D. DU. I could put it here or I could make it 1 DU, whatever you want. Oh, yep. So I could do that, or I could make it one over u du. And then so r rewrite. See how I rewrote? I did not do the integral yet. I just rewrote it. Integrate. What is the integral of one over u du? That's the ln. Ln of u. Uh, 
that's the value of u plus, plus c. c. Oh. Good. So Wait. rewrite, integrate. What's the next letter or thing? Simplify. Simplify. Um, so by simplify, it's not really going to end up being simpler. It's kind of like substituting. But you put this, you put the x's back, okay? Ln of absolute value. U is, yeah, U is x cubed plus x plus c. And that's my answer. Wait, so let's use substitution. And to just look at x cubed plus x and put that? Yeah. Like just hop from here to there? This is a simple example. So yes, you could do that. But the reason why we're doing this process is because there it will be more complicated. Um, like, see how du matches exactly? Yeah. That's what makes it simple. du will not always match exactly. Um, let's do one, another one where, okay. So, this is trig. So, the degree on the denominator being uh, one greater than the degree on the numerator does not apply to trig functions. I'm just going to tell you that the denominator is your u. u equals tangent of x. Can you all write what du is just on the side? Um, are we ever going to actually have to find out what c is? Yes, definitely. Yeah, you will. All right, so what's my du? Secant squared of x dx. Check. The dx is there technically because of the chain rule because the inside is x and the derivative of x is derivative of x. All right, you ready? So this is my rewrite step. Can you rewrite this, please, with u's? Yeah. This is just one over u du. Or you could have written Integral of du over u, that's the same. Either one of those is good. Are you ready to integrate? On that i step of ris. Do the S steps if you haven't already. Alrighty, so friends, the answer is ln of absolute value of tangent x plus c. Can you just take a, a step back and admire yourselves? Like, look at how complex this is. The integral of secant squared x over tangent x dx is ln absolute value tangent x plus c. I mean, like, if you were to show this to anybody else, they'd be like, what is happening? This is crazy. We have trig combined with natural log. You know, we got, like, variables that are actually constants. Like, not C is a constant, even though it's a letter. You know, this is crazy. You guys are good. I'm proud of you. Okay, another one. Okay, integral of... So this is where this is going to be trickier, okay? We're leveling up now. How do I know? There's no ln here. There is. Oh, what? How do I know there's going to be an ln? Because the bottom is one and That's what you were going to say, right? Yeah. 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 Like, but in the other one, isn't it the top? Well, tree, this, that rule does not apply to trigonometry. Oh. Trig functions, it doesn't apply at all. So what do we do if it's not? Oh. We haven't learned that yet. If it's not, we haven't learned that yet. So it always will be, or it'll be trade, which is different. Um, yeah, we haven't learned it yet. Okay, so my u, the degree in the denominator is one bigger than the degree in the numerator. So I set my u equal to the denominator. u equals x squared plus 2x. Can you go ahead and find your du, please? Our du.
Alright, you found it, right? What is it? Okay. So let's go to do the substitution, okay? How can I open the worker? That's my that's the same color. Do you want to? Okay. So I'm gonna rewrite this. I'm gonna rewrite the integral sign. Check. I'm gonna rewrite the denominator. I'm re re rewriting the division sign, rewriting the denominator is you. Check. Now See this so far? I have a stumbling block. How do I rewrite my numerator? I need to substitute, I have x plus one dx here. But over here, I don't have x plus one dx. I have two x plus two dx. You know what I mean? So what can I substitute for x plus one dx? What would that equal? Three du, no. Two du? Because I took the derivative of x squared plus 2x. Oh. 2x plus 2, you're right, it has to do with a 2, but it's not 2 du. 2x plus 2 is du. How do I get from 2x to x, and how do I get from 2 to 1? No, that would be 4x plus 4. If I multiply by, do we agree that oh, if I multiply right. this by oh, 2, okay. I get 4x plus 4? So. If I divide it by 2, I get that? Yeah. Uh, let's just do like a half du, okay? Maybe I'll write, I'll let me write it in red. One half, one half du. That's a numerator? Yes. So all of this, I substitute a half du. Yeah. If you like it better, okay? You could rewrite this in a couple different ways, and you probably will like this better, okay? You could, re you could rewrite this as follows. You could put the half out in front. Constants, you can always put out in front. In fact, I'm probably going to model it that way. And then D, do du over u. Okay, so this is an or. Or you could do a half integral of 1 over u and put the du at the end. Any one of those is equivalent and excellent. So you can split up the half and the du. And in fact, I recommend that you do. I recommend that you put any coefficient here in front of the integral. Why do I recommend that? Because that means you just like rewrite it and you're not going to worry about it when I actually rewrite it. So you never have to like, solve that out with the one half? Nope. I'm just going to leave it there. Yes. Yes. Okay, so you ready to integrate? Let's integrate together. So the half, I'm just rewriting it. That's it. Half. And then what's the integral of 1 over u du? ln absolute value x plus c. Oh, you, 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 you. Thanks, Chris. Not just x. Okay, so and then I'm going to simplify. 1 half ln of, my u is x, x squared plus 2x. That's my answer. So not equal, not um, du equal to the, to the numerator. Yep. Just show, just find the coefficient of ln. Basically, yep. All right, ready for this next one? I have a question. Yes. So if we like didn't simplify this here, yeah. um, right. how would you like solve it for this one? It would just be you would just put a half in front. It would, you would just go from here to there. You would just be like, that's a half. Okay. LN of U to you. Okay. Yeah. So if there's a number in the numerator, it's just like there. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let's do this next one. My U is, first of all, do you see how this is, the degree is bottom heavy by one? Because there's no x's on top, so it's x to the zero, zero versus degree one. Okay, so u equals 3x plus 2. Find your du, please. Okay. 
3 dx. So we got that, I rewrote that, I rewrote that. Now I have 1 dx. So I need to substitute for 1 dx. But over here, I have 3 dx. So if I want 1 dx, divide by 3. So it'll be a third du. Okay, I'm going to write this in red. Okay, a third du equals dx. This is, one, this is one reason why writing the dx is really helpful, because you have something to solve for here, otherwise it would be like nothing. Okay, so the third, you can put it anywhere. Again, we write it out in front, and then I'll just do like one and a du here. Okay, so the red is what I substituted for one dx. So it's doing the third du. Oh, yeah. This is like a big part of it. Sure, it's oh, as big as any other part, I yeah. Like we, I feel like I've asked this question like. I know, it's as big as any other part. Yeah, this is this is definitely, your substitution is a, is a significant topic, you, yeah. You're gonna do like a massive review, I think. Yes, I will. Oh, yep, I will, as on like part of class and on a Saturday. Ooh, Saturday, nice. Um, okay, so let's integrate this. Actually, you finish the problem, go. So we have one more slide, it's called finding area, but uh, I'm going to erase this slide and I'm going to make my own slide um, called, wait for it, the fundamental theorem of calculus. That's what we're learning. No big deal. The fundamental no theorem. Big okay, so just like cross this out. Oh, okay. Fun yeah, fundamental theorem of calculus. There are two cases to this. This is case one. Case one. Okay? We've already learned actually half of the fundamental theorem of calculus. The fundamental theorem of calculus, basically, if you were to be non-precise about it, says that derivative, derivative, um, and anti-differentiation are inverses. Anti-differentiation, which we call integral integration are inverse operations. That is the fundamental of theorem of calculus in words generally, overall, without all the precision. Derivative and anti-differentiation are inverses. Yeah. You know, our phone is definitely listening to us because after we learned about um, Anti-derivatives. I literally saw a TikTok about it, this. Like that's how nerdy my TikTok page. Wow. Is. I sent it to Mariam. It was so funny. That's a wow. That's crazy. Like the day after. Wow. Creepy, right? That's creepy. That is creepy. Yeah. I'll have to find it. I'll pull it up for you. Okay. So derivatives and integrals are inverse operation. You just missed the fundamental theorem of calculus while you were gone. That's it. Well, I hope the bathroom break was worth it. <laughs> I know. You're, no, I understand the kids have to go to the bathroom. I'm just playing with you. Okay. So here's it. It's kind of like a formula. All right. So the the integral from a to b of f of x 
dx equals, I'll talk about what the formula means in a second, but we'll just copy it down. But you should definitely write this down though. Okay. Equal, oh, thanks. Capital F of B minus capital F of A. That is the uh, fundamental theorem of calculus. is such a big deal. Obviously, we call it the FTC. Fundamental theorem of calculus, FTC. So that's the FTC case one. Where did B and A come from? Right. So let's label some stuff. These are limits of integration. This is the lower... Okay, so uh, vocab terms alert is lower limit of integration. What's the limit? This is, yeah, this is a different from the, uh, this is the upper limit of integration. Exactly, that's exactly right, exactly right. You're a sophomore? Um, yeah, we'll get, so when I have limits of integration, I'm going to get numbers as my answers. Okay, and this is the function, right? Capital F, capital F has a totally different meaning from lowercase f. Um, capital F is the antiderivative, derivative, aka integral, derivative of f of x. Wait, Miss, isn't that the same equation, but like when it's like lowercase, it's slope? Because remember when we like. Yeah. Oh, you've seen it? Yes. Like f of b minus f of a. Over b minus a? Yeah, it's, it just doesn't have the quotient part of it, yeah. basically. Yeah. Yeah, basically. You're saying these two equations are the same, right? Yep. So this is basically telling you how to, this is pretty like telling you how to integrate. Um, so we can think of it as like the antiderivative of little f is big f, but really it means when you look at this, here's like how we're practically going to do it. When you look at this, you integrate the function and then you plug in the top number minus plug in the bottom number. Does that mean like the numerator and denominator? Nope. The top number is just the number that's up here, and the bottom number is the one that's down there. So let's do like a, let's get conceptual for a second about ln. So remember how we define natural log as the area underneath one over x, yeah? Yes. Yes. So let's take an integral with limits of integration graphically first. Okay. Question seven, the question looks so easy, like the actual word, and then the answer the problem. Yeah, it looks like not, not fun. Looks oh, so hard. Wow. Okay, that? so <laughs> we see this. So I'm gonna ask a couple of questions using calculus. So you don't, you're just watching and looking right now, you're not writing down. Okay, so the integral from one to two of one over x dx. This is uh, one over, yeah, no, let's use one over t dt. Um, uh, no, I want to use x. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll call this one over x. Do I want a pen? Can you not? Oh, yeah. This. All right. So I'm going to integrate graphically 1 of 1 over x dx. So this, lower limit of integration. So this means find the area. Find area between this curve and the x-axis, which is, this is a rational, right? Between one and two. So I'm saying start at one, end at two, and I'm finding this area. Yeah, it's pretty, right? This big box has an area of one. So what fraction do you think it is, maybe? Two-thirds, three-quarters, yeah. It's 0 0.7, 0 0.69 is, is the answer. Let's say like two-thirds-ish. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's do, if I wanted to integrate from, let me get another color. If I wanted to integrate from, if 
I wanted to integrate from two to three, that would be this area, right? Mm -hmm. Of one over x dx. What do you think the answer for that one would be? One third. Uh, one third? Yeah, sure. Two fifths? Yeah, I'd say, I'd say like 40%, yeah. So it's about whatever, a third, two fifths, great. So how I would do this algebraically, so I just did it graphically, right? How I would do it algebraically using a fundamental theorem of calculus is I would say the integral of 1 over x is what? What's the integral of 1 over x? ln of x. ln of absolute value of x. Plus c. I'm not going to need the plus c. I'll go into that in a second, but just procedurally. And then I'm going to keep track of my 1 and 2 by going like that. Now, the fundamental theorem of calculus says you integrate. And then you plug in the top limit of integration minus plug in the bottom limit of integration. So ln of 2. I'm going to take away the absolute values because the absolute value of 2 is 2. You with me? So I just like throwing 2 better. Minus ln of 1. Oh. And we can, let's see, let's do it on the calculator and see what we get. We should get around two-thirds-ish. So ln of two. Yeah, do you guys know what ln of one is? So if ln is the area underneath this curve starting at one, what's the area from one to one? Zero. So ln of one is zero. Oh, ln of e? ln of e is one. What's the other one that we learned? We learned it. We learned ln of 1 is 0 and ln of e is 1. And ln of 0 was one of the questions. Oh, just e was 2.7. 2. Point e is 2.7, yeah. Okay. okay, so you ready though? Let's do ln of 2 minus ln of 1, which I'm just subtracting 0, but I'll just do it. What? It's about 2 thirds, yeah? What? OMG. I still can't. Okay, so this one. It's going to end up being ln of 3 minus ln of 2, right? Mm -hmm. I anti-derive, which is ln, and I plug in the top minus plug in the bottom. So let's do that. ln of 3 minus ln of 2. Let's see. Let's see if it's 1 third or 40 or 2 fifths. Oh, 0. 0.405. That's really close to 2 fifths, which is 0. 0.400. Okay, oh. so all right, all right. All right. Okay, so that is um, the fundamental theorem of calculus. You just anti-derive. And you plug in the top lim upper limit of integration minus, plug in the bottom, okay. lower limit of integration. Okay. So if it makes you feel any better, my friends at Bedford High don't know like when to stop taking the derivative of something. When to stop? I was like, guys, like it depends on like what derivative they're asking you to take. They're like, we're not this. They were oh. like, oh. talking about it in the car, and I'm like, oh my god. Oh no. They like, just started the derivative unit, so. We're a little ahead. What have they been, what? yeah, we're ahead of them. <laughs> what have they been doing? <laughs> That's crazy. Okay, yeah, we're definitely ahead. Good. Yeah, it's a good thing. It's a good thing you're here. Yeah, okay. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Which of the following is equal to ln of four? I'm gonna just tell us the answer um, to save time. It's gonna be e. All That's right. What I would guess. Yeah. Um, okay. Here we don't know. Right. So the integral. The integral from 1 to 4, I'm just copying it over, okay? Are we ready? Yeah. I was just cheating. I was, yeah. So what's the integral of 1 over t dt? The same as 1 over x dx. From, and I'm not going to do plus c, from, I'll, I'll explain in a second. Oh, yeah, oh, plus c. I understand. Okay. Okay, so I anti-differentiated, and then the other part of the fundamental theorem of calculus is plug in the upper limit of integration minus plug in the lower limit of integration. So I have ln of absolute value of 4, which is 4, minus ln of absolute value of 1, which is 1. What's ln of 4? I don't know. What's ln of 4? What's ln of 1? Oh, I do know. It's 0. Everyone, yes, yes, everyone. Never choose the one that that never choose the one that you 
choose the straggler. Yeah, yeah. This is this is the distractor. They want you to choose this one. They totally want you to choose this one too. I'd say. Yeah. A. Yeah. Um, yeah. Don't do that. Is L and X dx? That even makes sense. Yes, but it's a really, really complicated thing to integrate that we don't learn in Calc 1. Okay, good. Ellen, what? It's okay. Geez. I want to tell oh, you, okay. I want to show you why we're not using the plus C's because the plus C doesn't go away. It's not like the plus C doesn't apply here. It does. So let's do it with the plus C as I should do. Okay? So the integral is an ln of absolute value of t. The integral is really ln of absolute value of t plus C, right? From 1 to 4. Okay? That's the, that's the real integral as we've been taught, right? Now, I'm going to plug in 4. ln of 4 plus c minus ln of 1 plus c. So then the c's cancel. Boom. So I'm always going to have a plus c and then a, a minus plus c. So ln of 4 plus c minus ln of 1 minus c. Based on the formula, there's always going to be a c at the beginning and then a c after the negative minus sign. So the c's will always cancel out, which is why if I'm doing integration with limits of integration, you just can ignore the plus c. Isa. How come one of the ons don't cancel out then? Because uh, they're not this, these numbers aren't the same, like they're not like terms. Yeah. Um, other vocab alert. Let's write it on the previous slide so we have it all in the same place. Um, if you have limits of integration, so, okay, two, actually, two words, vocab, definition, definition, indefinite integral. And then we're going to learn the definition of definite integrals. Yeah, let's just write it on this slide so we have all the definitions and new vocab words in one plot. The definition of an indefinite integral is an integral, I'm just going to write the symbol instead of the words, with no limits of integration. Is that just like infinity? No, it's just, there's just, it's not bounded, you would say, there's not like a start, like Integrals are area, so there's no start and end to finding the area. It's just like more abstract than that. Okay, another definition. Definite integral. Definite integral. An integral. Basically, it's going to look like this. It's going to have numbers here with limits of integration. So, question uh, pregunta. On this AP question, the answer E, was that an indefinite or a definite integral? Definite. Definite? Yeah. Somebody else, why is that a definite integral? Because there are. Like numbers? Yeah, numbers. What do we call those numbers? Let's use the new vocabulary. Limits, Limits, Limits of integration. integration. Okay, I'm trying to get us to use our math vocab. It is a definite integral because the integral has limits of integration. Yeah? Okay, we're going to do our closing. You have two questions. Question number one. What is the fundamental theorem of calculus case one? Question number two. What did you learn about U substitution when the DU isn't exactly matchy-matchy? Go.